Hi, this is PD at Bergsberg Arcade at bergsbergarcade.com and this is tutorial 185. In this tutorial we're going to start creating the buttons for our different colors for our hairstyles. And we're going to place these right up on top of our previous and next buttons. So let's go ahead and open up Model Develop. And we're going to create a new function for this. And I'm just going to throw it right up here. And I'm going to make it private for now because I don't see a need to expose it outside of this script. And I'm just going to call it, uh, we'll call it hair color buttons. It's not going to take any parameters or return anything. And I'll go ahead and just put it up here above the the uh, previous and next buttons. And I'm going to leave it a little space in there just so we know. And to start off with, we'll just have it create one button for us. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste this here. And I'm just going to put an X here for now. And to start off with, I just want to get this uh, positioned right. So I'm going to create a new rect. And let me see, we have the button size rect. And I guess we really should name that now as this pertains to the previous to next buttons, which will be our hairstyles. And our new vector three will be for our uh, hair color buttons. So I'm going to quickly rename this again. And I'm going to call this hairstyle. button size and when I hit enter we'll notice that it went ahead and changed them all everywhere and I'll create a new one and it will be a vector 2 as well except this time I'm going to call it hair color button size and I'm just going to copy this one because it's pretty close to the same thing so we want it to be positioned the same on the X to start off with. We're going to want to use the position width minus the offset uh, times 2. But instead of being divided by 2, uh, we want it divided by the number of uh, hair textures we have. So we're going to have to replace this number here. So I'm going to create another variable. And I'm going to make this private. And it'll just be an integer. And I'm going to call this uh, number of hair colors and for now I'm just gonna stick it down here and initialize it as I believe I have six so number of hair colors is equal to six and I'm just gonna go into unity and make sure so let's shrink this script down and we're going to resources, character, hair, male, human, textures, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six of them. And I'll just replace this variable right here. And then for our Y, uh, we're, we can still use the position dot height. Uh, we can minus the offset times 2 divided by 2, so that, that should work as well. And we'll come down here and we'll just create the first button. So for the offset for this button, uh, for the first one, the X in our rect, uh, we're just going to use the offset plus... Well, actually, since we're, we'll just stick with the one button for now, so we're just going to use the offset. And then for our Y, I want this to be up at the top of the screen. So let's get rid of all of this and we'll just use the offset again. So this is going to put it right up at the top of our, our box. And then for the X and Y part, we'll just use the uh, hairstyle. Sorry, it's not hairstyle. This is hair color. Hair color, hair color button size. And of course, I actually made the edits to the wrong uh, wrong vector 2 up here, which is fine. We'll just change it like that. Uh, everything's fine, so we'll just go down here and start putting it in. So this was hair color button size, dot x, comma, and then hair hair, not har, hair color button size dot y. And I'll just save this off and we'll see if there's any errors. 
there are none so I'll go ahead and start it up and the first one should be positioned correctly there we go right in the very top left hand corner and let's create some sort of uh, loop for it right now so we'll go for and we'll just use uh, our basic for loop int cnt for my counter which is equal to zero and we'll just say as long as cnt is less than uh, we we're saying number of hair colors and then we'll just increase cnt tab that in and here's where we're going to want to move it over a bit so we're going to add to it the, the, the width of our actual button which is this here take its x property and multiply it by the number or whatever number we're on right now so cnt and it's a multiplication not an addition so we'll just save that off we got no errors and now we should actually get six buttons across the top one two three four five six and we see that they're positioned right uh, so i'm actually going to go ahead and turn that block uh, the box off in the background Uh, which is right here and we don't actually want to display an X what we actually want to display is a texture so let's start working on that next we're going to want an area of textures to be able to store these in and I'm going to make them private and I'll put them down here for now so private uh, texture and it's an array so we'll need the brackets and I'm just going to call this hair color textures and then we're going to want to set this up in our constructor here I'm actually going to put a couple spaces here so I know where the properties end and my constructor starts and I'm going to do it after this value here so we'll just say hair color texture is equal to new texture and then the number of textures we actually have so we could probably actually get rid of this whole variable here and just start putting six in here but we'll just leave it like this for now because we're just getting things up and working and that will initialize the size and we're going to need a way to load the actual textures into this so let's create that method next I'm actually going to come down to the bottom to do it and this will be private it does not return anything and I'm just gonna call it load hair color textures and I'm just gonna throw this in a for loop so again we'll just use your basic for loop so CNT is equal to zero CNT is less than, and there's actually two things we could use here. Uh, we could use the number of hair colors or the length of our array. And I just kind of like using the length. And then we'll increase our counter. And then let's just start assigning stuff to it. So hair color texture. Uh, the iteration we're on is equal to resources dot load and I'll fill that out in a second but we do want to make sure that we're typecasting it as a texture and in here we're going to want to load up the name of our hair uh, as well as have the path to our hair uh, for now we should set the path up as a constant uh, for now I'm just going to set it up as a string and I'm just going to call it path so we'll have in here the path plus you know and then some name which is uh, the name of our actual hair uh, so let's go ahead and get this path so I'm going to go back into unity and we start the resources folder so we know we're going to have to go resource from the resources folder it's character, hair, human, male, 
texture. So I'm going to make sure I type that in properly here, hopefully. So character, hair, human, male, texture. And don't forget that trailing uh, line here, or your, your backslash, I should, should say. And if you notice here, the way I have my name set up, uh, I actually want to switch this to light brown. Well, I want to, actually I want to keep it brown. Well, now I'm going to keep it as light brown. I, just a quick change here. And I'm going to use an underscore. I want to make sure that I'm not using any spaces in here. And the reason why is like later on we'll be putting the names of stuff in a config file. But for now, uh, enumerations are actually a pretty easy way to keep track of all this stuff. So I'll create a public enum. And I'm just going to call it hair color names. And I'm just going to go ahead and put all the names in here. So black, blonde, brown, gray, light brown, and red. So we start off with black, blonde, brown, gray. I'm actually going to put light brown in here as well. Uh, the order will matter. Uh, the order you have them here is what order they're going to be displayed uh, up on the screen. And I actually think I'm going to put red right here as well. And the last one does not get a comma. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have six. So back, oh, blonde actually has an E at the end. Black, brown, gray. Yeah, so that should be fine. And we'll come up here and let's add the actual name to it here. So we can just say hair color names. Uh, we're going to want the int value of it. And I'm going to need another parenthesis over here. And we'll just say dot to string. So what we're doing is as we iterate through, uh, we're going to get whatever number we're on here. Of course, it starts off at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it basically takes the name here and converts it to a string uh, to add to our path. So let's save that off and see if there's actually any errors. There is one. Uh, we have an unexpected symbol. So our parentheses are not lined up. So 1, 2, 1, 2. And it wasn't supposed to be an int, it was supposed to be CNT. So we'll go back in, and the error should disappear. And I'm just going to start it up, make sure there's no errors. And there is none, which of course it shouldn't be, because we haven't actually called this function anywhere. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to put it as the last thing in my constructor. And we'll let that compile up, and then we'll hit play and we'll see what happens. Uh, we're getting an error that keeps repeating. Uh, load can only be called from the main thread. Ah, constructors and field initializers. Okay, so we actually can't call it from the constructor. Uh, so we'll, we'll just cut it out since we can't put it there. We are going to need to check it and we're going to need to check it before here. So let's go ahead and say uh, if hair color texture and we're just going to look at the first one is equal to null so nothing's been saved to it yet oops we got it actually in the wrong spot that's the command I want but I don't want it there I want it up here so before we try to display them, uh, we'll take a look and see if we actually have any loaded. And if we don't, we'll go ahead and load those textures. Uh, not the opt 
optimal place to, or the optimal way to do it, but it should work for what we need. So we'll start it up and we do not get any error. So let's go ahead and actually start putting those textures in. So we're up here. We just simply have to change this to hair color texture and the index that we're in. We'll save this off. We'll start it back up. Now, because we're using the button and we're using a default button style, it's not going to look the greatest. Uh, but you can go ahead and style these any way you want. Let me go maximum screen or the maximum resolution to see what it looks like. Uh, what, well, what it's going to look like in my web player. And here it is. The whole thing's up here. I'm actually going to move it over a bit just to quickly demonstrate. Uh, some of the benefits of using a group. So let's say you know you, you wanted to move it over to 100. We'll start it back up and I guess we should have actually changed the style so that a little bit more shows up than right here. And I'm not going to bother creating a GUI style just yet. I'm just going to use one of the default styles. So we're making it right down here. I'll set a comma and let's actually use the default box style that's probably not gonna look that great because I think boxes by default have a little bar at the title bar at the top yeah uh, I guess we should have probably just used like a label or something like that something that doesn't have a border around it uh, of course label probably you know, probably none of them are gonna look that great uh, we'll probably have to actually make our own custom style and to be honest this texture isn't exactly that great either so there we go. Uh, but yeah, we're going to want to make our own our own custom style. And to be honest, I really should load a uh, different texture up, but I don't really have one right now. So I'm just loading these up just for now. So let's head back into Mono Develop. And it looks like we're just passing the 17 minute mark. So I'm going to call this one done. And in our next tutorial, we'll start implementing a little bit of functionality into our new script. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.